Hey Capricorn, it's me Stormy and welcome to your January 2020 horoscope where we are going to just get into this thing so that I can get you out enjoying 2020, letting January be full. You've got a heavy eastern hemisphere built so this is a time where Capricorn, you're at a peak of being able to push the Capricorn agenda. You're pushing forward. What makes you happy? You're on your hustle. This is a very self-confident, self-moving kind of energy and I don't want you sitting in a hundred hours of videos missing out on taking action in your own life. So we're going to jump in in just a second. If you would still like to sign up for the free forecast marathon that I'm doing with Astrology Hub January 9th through the 12th, you can click in the description box down below. There's still space. There will be 12 different astrologers. We're talking about 2020. We're talking about how to make use of it, the cycles, all of this good stuff. So if that sounds like it is up your alley, I would love, love, love to see you over there. All right, Capricorn. So as you can see from looking at the board, of course, it's Eastern heavy, which is great because it means you have the opportunities to be making your own moves. You have the opportunity to be saying, what's right for Capricorn? What makes Capricorn happy? It's actually a really brilliant placement because as we travel on and we start to get more Western bound, we're gonna need to do more Western bound kind of work and that includes others. Right now, this is about what is right for you, okay? As you can see, we still have a continuation of this first house being absolutely heavy. Your sign has been getting in, putting in some work for the last couple years. And really, I think if we think through the astrology, the last five years have, has probably been a fair amount of changing for most people, but certainly in the last year and some change, we've seen a lot of work to you. Now, because it's still so first house heavy, one of the things that we know is that your identity has changed at a core level, deep within that sun and that beautiful internal level of you, your identity, how you want to be known, how you want to present yourself even in an outward way. These things have been changing. They have been evolving, they have been advancing, but they are certainly not what they were when we met Capricorn in 2018. They are certainly not what they were six months ago. This is a different version of you available on the table. And just because you're becoming this different version doesn't mean you've got all the placements figured out. Doesn't mean you know all of this. And I am not of the mind that just because you're an earth sign and just because you're a Capricorn, that with these changes going on, you're just gonna, endure and you're going to just deal with it and you've just got it all figured out. I'm a fellow earth sign and people tend to think that earth signs are just going to endure and get over it and that is not how it works. This is emotional work as well because this creates some very big changes in you and also thus the ways that you will interact with other people. So I do want to tell you as I'm going through this forecast, there is still work to be done. This is your season of having the Saturn, the maturing, and even though it's more of a comfortable energy for you, taking you forward, there's still things to be seen within yourself. And because you're a changed version, some of these things may not be easy, but certainly you're almost there. So kind of keep that in mind, okay? All right, Capricorn, let's look at this bad boy by dates. First of all, at the beginning of the month, what we see is Jupiter being in conjunction with Mercury. And this is right here in your sign in your first house. Now, when Jupiter and Mercury come together, this is good news. Jupiter wants to make big plans. Mercury wants to get the details down so that we can achieve the big plans, right? So these two coming together in your sign tells me right at the beginning of the month, big plans, good news is on the way for you in how you're being seen in the outside world, how you're starting to adjust and adapt to seeing yourself. Maybe, like I said, even how you're dressing yourself, how you're showing your image out into the world. This is an enthusiastic and very positive energy of good thinking, goodwill, good movement. Success is also wrapped up in here as well. But the idea overarching is that there's a big plan available for you on the other side of this particular work that you're doing here. So so all month long, as things impact and influence this first house, you, your identity, what you think of yourself, what others think of you, there is a plan and there are other planets that are going to come in to help you achieve the success and abundance that you need here. I also do feel like with the sun here in your first house right now, sometimes these slower moving planets, even though you're very comfortable with Saturn energy and maybe you've been very serious or taking yourself serious or been a little bit more tired, 
If you've been feeling like these slower planets are kind of dragging their feet, the sun gives you motivation. Lean into that, right? And if your motivation right now at this point in the year is, I got to sleep, I've got to reduce my schedule, I've got to do a little bit more me time, do you, Capricorn? You are an earth sign, which doesn't mean you should just be enduring. Do what you need to do to be healthy, wealthy, wise, and uh, moving along here, okay? On the third, we see Mars moving out of the energy of Scorpio and into the energy of Sagittarius. So this is going to light up your 12th house space. So I'm telling you, here we are at the end of the year. You've moved into birthday time with Mars here. Mars is action, energy, movement. I'm actually doing things. My actions are motivated by the ideas that I have, what's guiding my life, my principles, my ethics, my morals, my beliefs, whatever it is. Mars here in the 12th house is saying, all right, let's make some moves. Let's make some progress. If there are things that need to be kicked out, swept out of here, do I have an old relationship that's not going to work for me anymore? Um, do I need to continue to sweep out my ideas around my old identity, right? And here's just an example of that, okay? So let's say, Capricorn, that you are used to your 30-year-old body, but you are not 30 years old anymore. Or let's say you're used to your body being one way and now it is different for some reason, right? You You've got to be shedding this old idea and this is an active energy to help you be assertive and aggressive enough to go ahead and do that. Mars in the 12th house as well. This is kind of giving me this, this vibe or this feeling here that if there is or has been a conflict or an issue from your past, with Mars here you are spiritually able to take action to resolve it. Right, because the issue will be spiritually grounded in the root of the situation. Was there dishonesty? Did you um, did you make a mistake? Did someone wrong you? Right, Mars is going to be here to bring a spiritual solution to your table, and it will be based out of Sagittarian energy. My beliefs need to get different. I need to believe differently here. I need to apply, or I need to learn. Maybe you're even doing a lot of study of spiritual principles, or or things like that. I will say too. Mars in the 12th house can make you sleepy or it can go the other way and make you really, really restless. So I would tell you to the best of your ability, move and get this energy out of your body if you can. But certainly projects that you've got going behind the scenes, maybe you're going to launch something in February or March. You can be working, working, working like a skinny taco over here, getting it all ready to go. Maybe you're planning a move down the road. You're, you're working on something behind the scenes to get you moving um, into another city or you're going on a trip. You're maybe, ooh, this would be lovely. Venus is going to be coming over here. Maybe you're traveling across the globe somewhere. Either way, Mars here is helping you work in the places that you can't always see, but you can certainly feel that there's something building and happening there, okay? On the 8th, Jupiter and the south node are going to come into conjunction with each other and this is important to understand because Jupiter is wisdom and the south node for over a year has been saying Capricorn I need you to detach from who you thought you were. I need you to detach from who you thought you were so that we can go be who we need to be. I need you to detach from doing everything yourself. And let's, let's maybe have some partnership, but let's have good, healthy partnership, right? I need you to detach from this identity that you felt like you needed to have for a very long time and let's embrace something else. So this is a wise day of reflection with Jupiter here. On the 8th of the 9th, I would tell you this is not necessarily the energy to plot your plans of intention moving forward, but it is a good energy to reflect at a soul level. When you get quiet and you close your eyes, Capricorn, are you still just trying to endure and tough it out? You know, have you made some decisions with Mars here in the 12th house in your past? Um, did you kick a relationship out of your life before you really gave it a shot? Um, is there a relationship or something from the past or a connection maybe to some male energy from the past and now you're willing and able to regard that differently in some way, shape, or form? Because what it's going to happen is as we get to the 10th, speaking of the 10th, we're going to have this full moon lunar eclipse happening at 20 degrees of Cancer. And what is going to happen with what you identify over here is it will ask you over the next six months to adjust your placement in that particular relationship, right? So the lunar eclipse is still our full moon for the month, and it says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or an adjustment needs to be made here. So I'm telling you, this vision that I'm seeing is you walked away from something in your past, 
or maybe something happened in the past and now that relationship is maybe back on the table and you're getting to relook at it, but much healthier over the next six months, right? It is not just about sit back and endure. It's not about Capricorn, do everything on your own. There are healthy, available relationships for you, but you're going to have to put in a, a lot of work. Right, The two of you in this partnership situation, whether it's a business relationship, a romantic relationship, a friendship relationship, hell, the relationship of you with you because you're still getting to know this evolved version of yourself, you're going to put in some work. But ultimately, you should get some information here that helps make this happen over the next six months, okay? As we get to the 11th, we've got a couple things happening. One, we've got Uranus who's down here in Taurus who's going to come out of retrograde into direct motion. So Uranus in Taurus has been over in your fifth house and I, I do like this. So first of all, Uranus comes in and he looks at all the structures you've set up in your fifth house with your children, with joy, with play, with your business, um, with romance. And Uranus is looking around and he's like, this place has been great, but this is a hot mess. It will not do going forward. Capricorn, I'm tearing this down because we need new innovative structures we need new innovative ideas to move forward into the future version and the future life that is coming for you you've got to be prepared so Uranus comes in and he smashes down all of these structures that were there right and in his retrograde that's what he's been doing look back over your life over this last year where have things changed with your children where is what brings you joy changed? Where have you had new beginnings or things like that coming to your table where you're like, oh, I need to innovate. Oh, this is getting extremely different, right? Where have you felt the level of instability here in your romantic life for my love of tacos? I mean, where have you seen your love life need to get different? Where have your ideas gotten different? Either way, when Uranus was retrograde, he was showing you all of those things. Now he's direct. And now you have the understanding of what you need to keep what you need to change in this area and Uranus is going to bring some change here. Now one thing that I do love is in the fifth house I do think that this is this is lovely. This can bring romance to your table in a different way. If you're already coupled up, you've been together a hundred years or you're so single it hurts, whatever your situation is, Uranus can bring whatever you're looking for but something different to the table. It may not look like what you're looking for. So stay open-minded. Don't just look with your eyes. Look with your intuition right here in this area of your life. And I do think for some of you too, if you have children, your children could be coming to the next stage of their development, whether that be they're going to college, um, they're having children, whatever it is it could just bring something real different in the children's zone okay Ooh, fresh opportunities for business here too okay maybe something unexpected all right also on the 11th or the 12th just depending on where you live on this planet we're also going to have the Saturn and Pluto conjunction now this is big news because Saturn and Pluto is such a slow evolutionary process to get us to evolve what's happening is that Pluto is saying Capricorn you cannot be the same Capricorn you have been um, for the last you know 30 years it won't work I can't do it we can't do it we've got to move forward or the last however many years um, so you need to die off in that way, and there's death, and death brings grief, right? But you get to rise as a phoenix, as a different, more prepared for your future that you've got coming version of your Capricorn. Now Saturn is also here as your ruling planet, and he says, yep, I'm maturing us. I'm taking us to the next place we need to go. We're going to achieve, but we're going to spiritually advance here. We're going to have success here. This is delicious for your business. This is delicious for you at work. This is delicious for you on this planet. You know, I think about it in just the natural progression of human living. Where have you gone from being that child to that adolescent, to that young adult, to the adult, to maybe now you're moving into middle age. Maybe you're becoming that grandparent. This energy is taking you to those levels and it is work, damn it, it is work. But this is also the gift of the universe. So if you are not feeling like that right now, I understand, keep doing the work. Don't tough it out alone. That, um, Lunar Eclipse should be bringing you some relationships to help you see how to do this and that you don't have to travel alone, okay? All right, so we'll definitely see this bringing a change to some area for you. And if you are grieving the life that you used to know, just know that that's okay as well. 
When we get to the 13th, Venus is hitting the hot road. She's picking up her cute shoes and moving on into the energy of Pisces. This is going to light up your third house. Now, first of all, Venus in the third house is a healing, healing salve to the mind. What you've been thinking, what you've been trying to assimilate and process and understand and bring some harmonizing in your thinking and your understanding, maybe in your relationships with neighbors or siblings, this is a healing salve that comes to you. Now, I also think Venus in the third house is phenomenal for buying or selling something if you needed to do that. She's going to bring honey to your mouth as you're doing communications, right? This is a magnetic energy. But this will be a conversation of forgiveness. This is a conversation of bringing culmination and moving some things forward. So Venus here is absolutely lovely. She's brilliant for romantic conversations. If you're whispering little text messages to someone, Venus will help you in that arena as well. And of course, learning, studying, and anything else that you do in the third house of the mind, Venus is just bringing a salve, a harmony, a diplomacy to your table that is absolutely brilliant. Now, as of the 16th of the month, we see Mercury moving on, the sun moving on. We're going to have a, a new moon happening. Mercury moves into the energy of Aquarius. The sun is right behind it. And right behind that, we have a new moon happening. So all of these bring you, Capricorn, into your financial peak for the year. And what that means is that your second house, your house of money, is lit up. How you make money, um, skills and talents that you have, passive income is also available here. So with Mercury moving here, this is new original thinking, right? Some original ideas about how you can be independent, how you can get these things done. How can you make money? How can you use those talents? I also feel like this is a brilliant energy for your self-esteem and your self-confidence with whatever you've been taking on. I mean, you know, it is a big deal to become a whole different person from core level in, get a new haircut, and then go out in the world and feel like, does my face match my haircut? You know, you're kind of trying to make sure that you fit the new person personality that you took on so this can help with some confidence as well now at this particular new moon because it's in the energy of Aquarius plant your seeds of intention what do you want to grow here with your money what do you want to grow here with your self-worth with your values with your possessions um, with harmony in your life what do you want to grow here right but it will also be around some levels of independence this could also be an energy here at this new moon where truly if you need a new group of friends or you need new supports in order to take you forward, you can manifest those in this area as well. All right, guys, last two days I want to tell you about and make you mindful of. The 27th, Venus and... Neptune, there they are, they ran off the board, they didn't. Uh, the Venus and Neptune will be traveling together in a conjunction. This is wonderful, they're the Bopsy twins, I do love them, but they make everything so good, so delicious, so rosy, so it's wonderful for being creative. It's wonderful writing that book, getting those poems down, having a snack with the neighbors, whatever. Not great for signing important documents. Not great on the 27th for making big decisions because everything is not clear, it's a foggy kind of energy. Now on the 28th, Mars is over here, and he's going to square this Neptune-Venus situation, and Mars is like, oh, no, no, we're not doing this again, right? Or no, And we say again, because this is coming from the 12th house, we've already seen it. So whatever it is, Mars is saying, you don't have all the information. Wait a minute. Let's gather some information before we make decisions. So again, not a great day to be making decisions, the 27th, the 28th, but it is a phenomenal day between everything that's happening here to maybe gather some information about big decisions about buying, selling, studying something that you're wanting to. You'll be in the clear as we get past those days, okay? All right, Capricorns, I love you a bunch and fellow earth sign to an earth sign. You do not have to tough this gig out alone. Invite people in. Let the relationships develop. It's going to be a good year, but don't do this deal by yourself, okay? I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!